24 of the top tour pros of 2019 began the journey back in April, but now only two remain here at the PBA playoffs, each with their eyes on the $100,000 prize. The season back, 10 time champ, Bill O'Neill. Versus the breakout star, Chris Prather. The PBA playoff finals are next here on Fox. Live from Portland, Maine, we welcome you to Championship Sunday of the PBA playoffs. Lighthouses and lobsters, that's what they do in Portland, Maine. Overcast and cool outside, inside. Things are really starting to heat up. Another full house for today's final. And you see the two competitors live down on the lanes right now. Bill O'Neill, your seven seed, set to take on nine seed Chris Prather in this race to two points. And Bill O'Neill just electrified this crowd in yesterday's semifinal sweep, the 14-year pro in the midst of the best season of his career in his mind. And he's taking on one of the new faces of the PBA right there. Last year it was make or break for Chris Prather on the tour. He made it out alive, and now he's absolutely thriving. He is bowling the best of his five-year career and we welcome you to Bayside Bowl. Beautiful crowd here as always in Portland, Maine. Thrills you're with us today for Championship Sunday of the inaugural PBA playoffs. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson here with you. Player of the Year front runner, Jason Belmonte, Team USA member Kyle Troop here with you. In case you can't tell, my voice is a little banged up. <clears throat> Courtesy of what Bill O'Neill did yesterday in the semifinals. A 258, game one, pretty good. But it was game two that's got everybody talking. He had a 289 and had everything go his way. He really did. He, he pulled beautifully, executed flawlessly, and he had some nice breaks to go with it as well. Look, when you have nice breaks, it tells you a couple of things. One, you're in the right part of the lane. Two, you have the right bowling ball in your hand. And three, you're letting it go perfectly. I think he's also extremely focused. We're seeing with Bill here. He's bowling, you know, obviously he bowled great yesterday. He's handling his emotions, and then in the big moment, he's letting it fly. This was his second shot in the 10th. Ten, 10 pin. That nasty 10 pin left standing. He concludes with a 289. I hate that 10 pin. So does Bill O'Neill, oh, by the way, today. So when you reflect back on what we saw in those two matches in the semifinals, there's a lot of numbers, a lot of data out there that tell you just how strong he was. Bill O'Neill never missed the pocket, yeah. averaged over 270, and uh, just incredible. Got some nice breaks, got a couple of messengers, tripped the four like we saw in the video. But again, Jason makes a great point. When you're puring it off your hand, the pins know it, and the pins react accordingly. Look, I think one of the biggest things that we should not forget was whilst that was probably one of the best performances I've seen from Bill on TV, he didn't just have to free roll. He had Sean Rash breathing down his neck the entire time. Sean was only a couple of eight pins away from potentially winning the match. So here you have Bill throwing countless strikes, but he had someone crawling down his neck. Yeah, and I think also with him bowling so well, I mean, when you bowl 540 for two games, you're going to be feeling pretty good walking into the bowling center the next day. I talked to him a little bit this morning, and he's exuding confidence. I mean, he, he killed it yesterday. I mean, you couldn't ask for a much better performance other than the 300 but he's probably going to have one saved up for a little later today. Yeah, so I think the big question about Bill O'Neill is, is there a carryover, Jason, or is there a hangover from yesterday? Look, it can go one of two ways, really. I mean, you can walk in and have an expectation that you're going to perform exactly like you did the day before. But if you don't start off with those string of strikes, there is a, an added pressure like, oh, things are a little different today. So how he handles that, if he doesn't come out of the gates with strings of strikes, will be the tell uh, for me if he's going to win today. I mean, I, I believe, you know, Bill's, Bill's very confident. He, he's, he bowled great yesterday. He's feeling good today. His nerves are low. I think he's handling the moment well, and he's ready to get out there. He got that crowd behind him. He really was able to manage it very well yesterday with all the energy of that potential 300 game brewing. We'll take a look at Bill's path just to get here as the crowd behind us gets fired up courtesy of the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson here with you. Had a bye as a seven seed in the first round. Took care of Jesper Svensson 2-1 in the round of 16. Swept the big nasty West Malott in the round of eight. And then yesterday took care of a really game Sean Rash the six seed in the semifinals to get here to today's title match versus Chris Prather. For more on Bill O'Neill, we go downstairs. Kimberly Pressler standing by with Bill.
Thanks, Rob. So, Bill, you're coming off a near-perfect game yesterday that got you into the top two, but we saw you more emotional than we normally do see you. So how much did you feed off of this amazing crowd here? The crowd is incredible. I mean, it gives you life while you're here. Um, I appreciate every one of these people, and this is the way bowling should be. This is, this is a sport, and this is how sports are. It's an absolute amazing sport. Now, let's talk about the matches in general, because on that left lane, you made quite a few adjustments. Do you plan to do that again, and why did you do that? Yeah, the left lane hooks a lot more. So uh, my strategy is that I'm going to have to play him the hook a lot more than, than the right lane. And with Chris being in the same spot as me, probably even further left, the lanes are probably going to transition a lot more than they did for me against Sean. So I just got to keep my keep my eyes open and, and uh, you know, and just attack the lanes as they uh, present themselves. We'll let you get back to practicing, and we're going to send it back up to the desk. Look, one of the things that I just heard from William then that I really want to make a, a point about is when speaking with his tour rep, Rob Gottschall, there was a clear defined difference between the left and right lanes but more importantly they're expecting Chris Prather to be playing much closer to Bill's line than Sean Rash was yesterday so they're already starting to think of secondary strategies in case they see transition in the lanes faster. Kyle what did you see in the difference between the left lane and the right lane even before yesterday? Yeah I mean I would say just traditionally the left lane has always hooked more in this building lane two hooks a lot more than the right lane and we've seen that in the PBA league a lot we've seen it a little bit yesterday and I think today that's going to be the, the point. Whoever can conquer the difference in the two lanes, I think might come away with a victory. I so, think it's all about staying ahead of the transition because, like Jason said and, and, and Kyle alluded to, the players are going to be playing so close to one another that the lanes are going to break down very quickly. Who can stay ahead of the transition before it happens wins today. All right, so that's the Bill O'Neill story. As for his adversary here in our title match, Chris Prather, his semifinal game, really got started off on the wrong foot as in a foot foul in the second frame of game one the foot the left slid touched the line but how he was able to come back from that is the big talking point in his match versus anthony simonson he stormed back to win the first game by 38 pins simonson took game two we went to a two ball roll off strike from prather and then left that 10 pin which meant an opening for simonson but the lumberjack had to strike here not all the wood goes down. Seven pins standing. Prather advances. And it's how he handled himself after that foot foul in the second frame of the first game that really stood out to you, Kyle. Yeah, I think that's that's one thing that shows his maturity level. But we've also gathered from Prather that he's quite nervous. You know, he said he was the most nervous he's ever been in his career yesterday. And in the second frame to start out with a foul. That's pretty hard to come back from, but he did. And it was also a grinding match. It was a lower scoring pace, so he was struggling to find the pocket, struggling to carry, and he got a foul. The biggest difference between Chris and Bill was Chris's match was polar opposite to Bill. Bill used one bowling ball, a little bit of transition, that was it. Chris went through three different bowling balls, an immense amount of pressure after the foul. The match was up and down the whole, the whole game. It was a grind fest. So I think the first time that Chris gets out the, the sorry, when he gets out there, if he can get comfortable quickly, it's going to really help him build the game. But if he comes out feeling a lot of pressure and, and he bows again, I think it's going to give Bill a big advantage. You've sent some nerves from Prather today. Oh, I sure did. I, I went down and spoke to both players while they were practicing about an hour ago. And Chris Prather was visibly nervous. He was, uh, he was sweating profusely. Um, I asked him how he was feeling, and he said verbatim, I'm really nervous. Um, I'm having trouble trying to find the key to get my thoughts together and to basically handle this. Yep. I went over and talked to Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill had not a bead of sweat on his brow, uh, and it's very warm down there with all the bright lights and everything, all the, all the, uh, the fans here. And Bill O'Neill looked like it was just another day of practice. He was focused. He said, I'm just going through my, my same routine like I always do. And it really looked like two polar opposite players. Tim Mack is the tour rep for Kyle Prather and did his best just moments ago to try and calm the young man down. Pressure is a privilege. Privilege, bro. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> All the days of practice, all the stuff that you've done for so long is for this moment right here. One of the, one of this, a moment like this of many to come forward, moving forward in the future. This is why we play the game. This is why we play the game. Park tour rep, park psychologist. 
Yeah, and that's that's great, you know, having Timmy there because I know Chris is nervous right now. This is the biggest moment of his career, bowling for the most amount of money that he's ever bowled for. And with the tour rep there, it's a lot easier to kind of settle the nerves just a little bit. And I think that he's going to handle his nerves quite well today. Once that first ball goes down the lane, he's going to settle in, and I think we're going to have a good match on our hands. You know, what I see is a 10-plus year veteran who's bowled uh, you know, nearly 100 shows on television and a, and a younger guy coming out in his come-out year experience in a moment this big for the very first time. I don't think this is what we're going to see from Chris once the ball starts rolling. I actually feel like he will fall into it. He will feel more comfortable. Right now, though, yeah, he's probably hoping that we just be quiet, they turn the lanes on, and he can just get into it. Well, look, the reality of that $100,000 payday is starting to come to light. It looked like something off in the distance in a soft focus, but now it's just two games potentially away from life-changing money for his family. And as we all know, money does strange things to people. <laughs> it, talks, it talks loud, man. <laughs> it really does. Uh, it, it, it's going to be very interesting to watch, and I think that uh, Bill O'Neill is expected to handle this kind of pressure because he's been there so many times. Bill O'Neill won the U.S. Open, which paid him $60,000. So, you know, he's got a little bit of feel for this, but still, 100 grand's 100 grand. One of the things I think that will be upsetting Bill today is he's not the underdog. I think Bill considers himself the underdog more often than not. And today, he's the overwhelming favorite. So, hopefully, uh, for his sake, he doesn't think about that too often and just gets out there and throws his shots. Let's take a look at the road to today's championship match for Chris Prather. He did not have a first round bye, so he had to take care of Darren Tang in a single game elimination. Round of 16, my frenemy Tom Doherty was swept 2-0, and then he took care of the number one seed, the number one player on the planet right now, your player of the year favorite, Jason Belmonte in the round of eight. Yesterday in the semifinal survived a roll off versus Anthony Simonson. Kimberly, standing by right now with Chris. Thanks, sir. So Chris, uh, Yesterday, yesterday we, we, when we did the interview, you said that your nerves were getting to you. It was actually more nervous than your wedding day. And then you just talked to Tim Mack, the tour rep, and you guys talked a little bit. So what's happening right now? You had a chance to throw some balls. Yeah, we're just trying to get my process in line and make sure that I'm focusing on exactly what I need to do to slow everything down and just enjoy the moment, you know, and, and just kind of let everything happen. I've been bowling for, you know, a decade and a half now for competitively. So it's just about putting all that time and effort on the lanes and just letting everything that I've done to train my body to get ready for this moment to just let it happen. Think you're going to be able to do it? We're going to find out. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. All right, we wish you the best of luck. Guys, we're going to send it back to you. All right, Kimberly, thank you. No, no sweat coming off the brow there. He doesn't have the, uh, I think the help Tim of... Tim Mack wiped it off. <laughs> he doesn't have the help of makeup like the four of us on the set. All right, it is prediction time right now. We're going to go down the line and pick our winners. Who do you like in today's two-game final? Uh, both very talented players, obviously, to get this far, and, and um, they bowled magnificently. I have to give the edge to experience, and... That experience goes to Bill O'Neill. Yeah, I'm with Randy here. Uh, has nothing to Shocker. do with the fact that he's, uh, you know, one of my best friends. But, you know, a, over a decade of experience, momentum on his side. Prather really feeling it today. Bill being a lot more calm. Uh, I tip my hat to Bill. Kyle, who's your pick? Well, you know I like picks, so we're going to pick that. Atta boy. <laughs> but I'm also a gambling man, and I'm going to have to go with the underdog, Chris Prather. I know he's nervous, but like I said, when that first ball goes down the lane, he gets to punch his fist one time, get a little rowdy. I think uh, Prather's going to bring it home. Pick us to break, Kyle. Pick us to break, my friend. We're going to pick it out. Coming up, game one of our championship showdown here at the inaugural PBA playoffs. Chris Prather. Bill O'Neill, 100K on the line. Live bowling after this quick break. PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, Log on to GoBowling.com. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, Kyle Troop, Jason Belmonte welcoming you back inside Bayside Bowl here in Portland, Maine. It is title time here at the PBA playoffs. Prather, O'Neill, 
set to duel for the intros. Kirk Von Kruger, Deputy Commissioner of the PBA. Are you ready? Welcome to the 2019 PBA Playoff Championships. It's now my honor to introduce our two finalists for today's competition. The number nine seal from Plainfield, Illinois, Chris Prather. We'll be facing the number seven seed from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, Bill O'Neill. Billy O's got an all business right. forecast on his face today, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Here's your format for the PBA playoffs. Essentially, win two games. Yeah. Try to get the sweep. Otherwise, you go to an unpredictable two-frame roll-off. Again, if you've never watched live bowling, you're in for a treat today because this atmosphere in this venue, in this city, is different. It is unique. It is unlike any other on the planet. Portland, Maine has made the PBA playoffs an absolute success in year one. First shot of our title match, and it's 10 in the pit. Cal Stoic, just all business, the real deal. Looks angry out there. That's, that's focus there, my brother. Yeah, reminds me of somebody I met last night. Chris Prather up his first shot, a little smirk on his face. Talked about the nerves in the pregame from Prather. See how he handles it on his first shot. See anything there? Yeah, I see nerves. I see his wife. She's nervous as well. Ashley. We knew he was going to be nervous. We knew Bill was going to be jacked and nervous, right? But it's how you handle adversity. Do you rebound? Yesterday, he did it brilliantly. After, after the foul, a frame later, he comes back with a five-bagger. Kicks that, the two-pin into the pit there. That was yesterday. Now it's today. Here's your look at the oil pattern they're rolling on today, Randy. 39 feet of Don Carter. This pattern is very scorable over here on the west side of the building. The players are going to be arcing it just a little bit between second and third arrow, and they're going to be very close to one another in terms of location on the lane. Prather moves to the left. Pretty pure. Pretty pure. Well, this is exactly what you want if you're in Chris Prather's camp. Nice little rip the rack strike for his second shot in the opening game of the championship. Real deal is the chant. Hates it. Yeah, look down immediately. On the left lane, Strike Track is telling me that both players are playing right around the 14th board at the arrows and about the fifth board at the break point down the lane at about 40 feet. Left the 3 6 10, converted 80% of the time. You know, way for uh, Chris Fraser to get loose very quickly. Have to go open or not strike. Yeah. There will not be an open there. Here's a strike track 3D comparison from yesterday. O'Neill, the red ball, pray through the blue ball, and you can see right around third arrow for both players' break point almost identical. And of course, entry position is going to be very close as well. Expect a lot of the same today. Listen to that crowd. Way right. 
We talked about him not missing the pocket at all yesterday in the semifinals. Yeah, now it's back-to-back -back shots. You see O'Neill drops it into the swing, and one of the things that he works on with his father, Bill Sr., is not getting too long with his push away. If he gets too long with it, it makes him tip, and then he gets real steep with his swing. Another spare conversion. Disappointed. Pretty clear to see that on his face. He's having a little bit of a timing issue the last two shots, and he says, when I do this, the ball goes both left and right of target, and that's exactly what we saw in those last two shots. So Prather, he's had this smirk since the beginning. It's not a mean smirk. It's not an ego-driven smirk. I think it's part nerves, part I'm enjoying this crowd chanting shark for me. And then it gets dialed in. Late drop of the seven. And there's that element here in Portland where you do have to embrace the energy and the crowd and the enthusiasm and use it as a positive. But if you go too far, it can go dark on you. Yeah, and he's done a great job of, of doing just that and using the crowd energy to his advantage. Back-to-back -back jacks, Prather up 12. Here's his road to today's title match. Sweat Doherty and Belmo. And then yesterday in the semifinal, took care of four seed Anthony Simonson. Big shot here, game one. Take a 22-pin lead. Yeah! Three in a row. Happy wife, happy life. Now let's talk so much about the nerves. Well, I've got to tell you, Prather looks like he's really handling it well so far. He got he got relaxed and comfortable very quickly. And, and Bill has done his part to make it easier for Prather with back-to-back -back, uh, semi-tricky spare conversions in the second and the third. Here he is in the fourth. And that's his second strike. Right now for O'Neill, it's about finding his rhythm and his timing. Get, make sure you get the ball into the swing correctly to set yourself up to execute good shots. He was dialed in yesterday. O'Neill can max at a 268, Prather at 290. Hill's approach on the last shot. Oh, there's the wife, and look who's on the right, our good friend, Mike Fagan. We haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. Fagan, a former pro, part of the Rat Pack. Billy O, Belmo, Fagan. Major champion. Come on, Tang. Yeah, now that's disturbing because that looked pretty good. And when you when you throw when you throw a good shot and you like it off your hand and it goes Dang flat ten for a right hander, that's not a good thing. You see him go down to that to that knee, and that's always a sign that all right, come on, that's a good shot. Needs to strike and the flat ten standing. Jeans from Baby Gap. <laughs> Here's tonight's Columbia 300 fun fact. Today's $100,000 first place check, the most in any PBA event since. Our good friend Major Mika. Mika Koivunemi won a quarter of a million, a cool quarter. Yeah. In the 2011 PBA Tournament of Champions in Vegas. You and I were there for that one. Yes, sir. Remember what else happened in that uh, that event? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you mention your friend of me again? Tom Doherty had a pretty good day. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tom, I had uh, to. I love Tom. Bottom of the fifth. He's going to be calling us in a moment. Another strike for Prather. The lead swells. It's now 32 after five. Well, the underdog is taking it right to O'Neill now. And I know all the naysayers. Hey, well, you picked the wrong guy, Randy. You're wrong again. Well said at Belmonte, but uh, it's not over yet. But I'll tell you what, the last four shots from Prather have been beautiful.
looking for five in a row. Won his first tour title back in March. Whoa. Seven pin was teasing a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, just the soft 10 standing. Watch this. 7-10? Uh, no, I don't think so. What's your least favorite 10 pin? The weak 10 because weak it, 10. it because it it challenges your manhood and your masculinity. Mm -hmm. I hate them all. Now I'll give you a good story about the weak 10 if you'd like it. We got a commercial. Maybe we could do when it afterwards. When we come back, I was kind of okay. trying to tease it. Oh, good, good. All right, Chris Prather up 31 through five and a half of our opening match of our race to two points, $100,000 on the line. Prather already with the ham bone and a sizable lead here in game number one. Another packed house here in Portland, Maine. Bayside Bowl filled to the brim. Today, NASCAR heads to Pocono, Randy. It's a battle of the tricky triangle. I think all triangles are tricky. Yeah. It's the Monster Energy Cup Series. It starts at 2 Eastern over on FS1 and on the Fox Sports app. You know what follows us? Tell here? me. The U.S. Women's Open. I, I thought it was. Championship, yeah, Charleston, yeah. South Carolina. Yep. Big day of sports here on Fox and FS1. As you take a look at our updated scoreboard, Bill O'Neill up to conclude the sixth. He's down 31 pins, only two strikes for him. Prather, nothing but strikes, two through five. He really did. There's his wife, Christy, cheering him on. Looked a little fast to me, and he was talking with his tour rep, Rob Gotchel, during the commercial break, and Rob said, just soften your hand up a little bit, and make it, that'll make it, or help it come around the corner. He said, just let the lane do all the work. A little less, or a little, too little hand on that shot, the ball went too long. Can't get too handsy. Yeah. And English is my second language. <laughs> French is going to be my first in a few days. Yes, it is. Hours. World Cup for Rob Stone. Yes, sir. You gotta have it. Back to back jacks for Billy O. Here we go. Let's take a look at our track technique, Randy. Two very similar games, and, and that's why both players are playing the same part of the lane, but this is what I love about these games. Check out the down swing for both players, how it tucks the inside part of their swings. Just beautiful. Prather back up in the seventh, leaves the 10 pin. That's a, that's a week 10. Now, here's my story. Well, uh, hang on, I gotta, I gotta finish this and then All I'll right. tell you my All week right. test. Give story. us some more track Look at the beautiful positions of their hand. Right there and right there. Very it's similar. Almost hitting his ankle shin area. Well, that shot there brushed O'Neill's pant yeah, leg. Sure did. All right, so after he shoots at this 10 pin, I'll tell you the week 10 story. All right. All right, so I'm not bowling on the senior tour anymore. I'm just bowling leagues and uh, I'm using 15 pounds. And every time I leave a week 10, I just get so PO'd. Mm -hmm. So I decide to go to, to, to back to 16 pounds. Yeah, I've big. been using 15 pounds forever. Yep. So I go, go bigger, go I'm, home. Right? All right? I go to 16 pounds, very first game, third shot of the game, week 10. Ooh. I about put my head through the ball return. Okay. So I just had to come to the realization that I don't have enough hand. Maybe if I threw 18 pounds, but they don't make those. Gotcha. Not yet. The shark in the eight, up 20. Right through the nose. Yep. Again, this a race to two points. Win a match, get a point. The idea is to sweep your opponent through two games. 
and you get a hundred thousand dollar payday. Here's the last shot from Prather. It looks slow and left immediately. Maybe I'll get a strike track number from Brent. O'Neill now max score 258. With a spare here, max score 246. Ooh, it up. Things have changed. Yes, sir. But for me, the telling shot for O'Neill is going to be this next shot on the right lane. Three straight strikes for Prather. Meanwhile, two straight strikes for Bill O'Neill. We saw this yesterday. Uh, the change of momentum, how quickly it can happen from one camp to another. Hates it. Does not like it. Through the nose. Oh, how about a messenger, though? Cleaning up some garbage. Leaves just the three pin. Struggling right now to get it off his hand. And this is just a timing thing. He hates it immediately. Bad timing equals a grab at the bottom of the swing, makes the ball go left to target. He made him look so easy yesterday. And right now you can see that if you're not on top of your game, they're not that easy. Right. O'Neill's gonna have to figure it out and figure it out quick. Again, he's got another game to figure it out, but he's still in contention here to try and steal game number one. Max score now 227. Prather is at 226, heading into the ninth and tenth. Wife Christy looking on. Another look at our good friend Mike Fagan there on the right. There's Christy. That is how you do it. And some pressure pushed to the Prather camp. Beautiful execution on this shot, but he's got to put them together. He's got to find a way to repeat, and that's what he's struggled with here in game one. Prather now coming off of an errant shot in the eighth frame. To max out at a 246. Hasn't seen a strike, though, Randy, since the fifth frame. Pretty good. And when he needed it, too. Yeah. Now he can close this game one out with another strike here in the 10th frame. If he does not strike on this next shot, Bill O'Neill can still win game one. Now, this is what makes it fun. You want to talk about pressure. You got a packed house, you got television lights, and you've got $100,000 dangling in front of you. Prather knows he can close it out. A strike here would pretty much do it. Heavy, and in a big trouble now. Big trouble for the Shark. Well, he made the ball change in the ninth frame, and then another errant shot. He gets five through the middle. Even if he converts, O'Neill can still strike out and win. Unreal. As big as that strike was in the ninth, this eclipses it with a major error. Strikes here, he forces O'Neill to get all three. A strike will get Prather 226. O'Neill can max out at 227. Ten. Yeah. And he gets it. Right. Wow. In the books with the 226. 
You like championship bowling? I do. I like it a lot. It doesn't get any better. Game one, coming down to the 10th frame. O'Neal has to have all three. the best season of his career in his words. Right now he's focusing on trying to get the ball into the swing at the right time. His timing is the only thing he's thinking about. It's been an issue the entire match. Say it, I can't believe that ball didn't hook. Pretty good. What a finish. My goodness, and how big was that conversion? I, I was just gonna say that. Tenth of the three, four, six, seven, yeah. ten. Because if he doesn't make that, O'Neill just needs the first strike. We're gonna go back to the set after this break. Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop will join you and I there. And boy, we're gonna talk about that 10th frame because so much took place there. O'Neal had a chance, needed to strike out in the 10th, got the first, but couldn't get all 10 on his second shot. Chris Prather, 226, 215, takes game one. We welcome you back to Portland, Maine. You know what they do in Portland? They do lobsters. They do oysters. I love oysters. Well. You know that. I'm, right now, I'm looking at my late lunch. I cannot wait for some Portland oysters. How good was game one? We're going to talk more wow. about that in a moment. But first, we are just five days away from kicking off the FIFA Women's World Cup. All eyes, Alex Morgan, Carly Lloyd, Megan Rapino, the U.S. women, your defending champs. They look for their historic fourth World Cup title every game live on Fox and FS1. Also streaming on the Fox Sports app. Who wins it, Randy? Team USA all the way. Belmo? Come on. Australia's going to I know. Finish, Kyle? America. America. Attaboy. Well done, Kyle Troop. You've learned how to, how to say America properly. Time now for your Ebonite flashback. Back on January 6th, the real deal, Bill O'Neill taking on Jacob Buttruff at the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. First event of the season. Buttruff failing to convert the 4-7 in the ninth. O'Neill comes through, captures his first singles title in four years. And then at the World Series of Bowling in the Scorpion Championship, our other finalist, Chris Prather took care of this guy named Kyle Troop, Bill O'Neill, and then B.J. Moore in the title match to earn his first PBA career title. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Jason Belmonte, and come on, man, Kyle Troop. I can't even handle You're above those like glasses, that. man. The These shark are glasses shark are out. Glasses, Look, the shark was a, a big story, obviously, in game number one of this. And, and so much of the conversation is going to be on what transpired in that 10th frame. We had a lot to talk about until the 10th came up. Let's take a quick look back at how the 10th transpired. And Chris Prather in the 10th leaves the 3, 4, 6, 7, 10 after this strike right here. And, we're saying to ourselves, all right, it, we're in all kinds of trouble, but when he picked that conversion up, Belmo, what did you say to yourself? Well, he's obviously went through some transition between that and a couple of Aaron shots. That first shot in the 10 was where he wanted to throw it. He was happy with that shot. It overhooked, left a difficult spare, regrouped, made that spare, 
and then still needed that next shot in the 10th to force Bill to get all three in the 10th. He yep. made another move. He moved another couple of boards further left, yep. slowed his speed down, and had a much better angle of entry into the pocket. Other side of the house here at Bayside Bowl, Prather and O'Neill going through warm-ups right now. Uh, after that conversion in the strike, and then Billy O had to strike out uh, Kyle in the 10th, was able to get the first, but not the second. What did you see from Bill O'Neill through the course of that kind of up and down first game from him? I definitely feel like Bill is definitely seeing transition more than he did yesterday. Obviously, when he was bowling Sean, Sean was right of him. And now today, Prather had a little more rev rate playing for the left. So he's seen a lot of transition. He might be seeing a ball change next game. And, um, but he's smart enough. He's been in this position many times, and I'm sure he'll make the adjustments. I, I, can I tell you what I saw? I saw Bill O'Neill struggling with timing and struggling to repeat shots. And that's where, when you see left and right misses, usually it's a timing thing. And when we interviewed Bill, at the start of the, the championship a couple of days ago, he said, hey, I went back home and I worked with dad and we just worked on one thing and that was my push away because when my push away gets bad or when it gets late, I get steep and then my misses are both left and right. You know his game as well as maybe his dad does. What did you see? Look, the truth is, Bill didn't bowl a good game. You know, he had three really bad shots. Why that was, the environment, the moment, you know, there's a lot probably going on right now. I think he's going to fall back to basics, do that, that push away that he wants to do. But ultimately, you don't have time in, in a one-game match to throw three bad shots. Now, he still had a chance. He got a little lucky in the fact that he tripped a two-pin, which he was then able to capitalize on top of. But you can't expect that's going to happen again. So for Bill to get back into this, he's going to have to fall into that comfort zone immediately. And Bill O'Neill now, guys, in a must-win situation just to force that roll off. Bill standing by live right now with Kimberly. Thanks, Rob. So, Bill, you struggled a little bit at the top of that match, but then you found your stride. But you needed strikes in the 10th. What happened? I threw the one in the 11th really good. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think I got a little bit of benefit yesterday from Sean playing right of me, made that spot hook a little bit more um, than, you know, than Chris is, is doing. Uh, so I'm going to have to make a ball change on the right lane and just keep making shots like I did in the 10th. Well, you are still not out of this, and your buddy, Jason Belmonte, just said that you need to get comfortable. So what do you got to do to make that happen? Yeah, you know, when I get going bad, I, I, I rush the first couple of steps. So I just got to, you know, go through my process, you know, take deep breaths and just, just relax and slow down a little bit. All right, we'll let you get back to this right, practice. Thank you. Rob? Kimberly, thank you. Kyle, when you're in a situation like that, what do you do to get back to the basics and calm yourself down? The one thing that I think of, and I hear that from my tour rep, I believe he's probably hearing the same thing, focus on your process and stay in the moment. Focus on your pre-shot routine, whatever it is. Try and calm yourself. How difficult, though, is it to stay in the moment in this type of venue with that paycheck looming over your head? I mean, not only the environment adds to the pressure, but then the 100000 as well. And it, it's a big moment. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest moments of both of these guys' career. And the one other quick point that I did want to make is I'm scared if I'm Bill O'Neill because that split conversion, momentum. That's the one word I can think is momentum, and it's all on Prather's side right now. Let's take a look at our game summary courtesy of strike track and how these two fared up going head to head. Anything that jumps out to you early, Randy? Well, yeah, it, it's the, the a little wider path going to the pocket for O'Neill. And those were the errant misses that uh, Jason spoke about. Uh, Prather was much more accurate and made better shots in game one. Look, Bill mentioned that he wants to change ball in the right lane. And for me, for him to get into that comfort zone, knowing his game as well as I do, it's all about ball reaction. If he believes he's throwing the right ball, that he believes that when he lets it go, it's going to strike, all of those processes, all of those, uh, you know, pushaways and his timing, it just falls back into place immediately. So it's going to be a big first few frames for Bill O'Neill. Another factor, this is a massively long break for two guys to sit and warm up over there and then come over here to the big house with the big money on the line. Be very interesting to see how these two guys react to the time break. And game two between Prather and O'Neill on the way. Also, an interview with the commissioner, Tom Clark, who's got some big news about the PBA playoffs for next year.
Welcome back inside the iconic Bayside Bowl here in Portland. Over on the other coast, Tiger Woods is going to return to Pebble Beach, the site of his most dominant major. Watch out, though, for this guy. Brooks Kepka. Yeah, looking to make history as he attempts to capture his third straight championship, the U.S. Open. It begins June 13th on Fox, FS1, and the Fox Sports app. At historic Pebble Beach, have you ever played there? No. I have had the opportunity to play there three times. Unbelievable. Yeah, that good? Un oh, it's just I've incredible. walked the beach yeah, yeah, underneath yeah. that one hole. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. That's yeah, about that's number, probably lightning. number eight. Sounds good. All right. Kimberly Pressler standing by on the lanes with the commissioner of the PBA, Tom Clark. Hi, Kimberly. I sure am. And Tom, you know what? I don't think anybody can deny that the inaugural PBA playoffs has been absolutely amazing to watch. And this crowd right here, you can hear them in the background, has really set the bar for how bowling fans should be everywhere. So what does the future hold for the PBA playoffs? Oh, thanks, Kimberly. It's incredibly exciting. And what a great finish to the first PBA season on Fox and to have the, the first Fox PBA playoffs here at Bayside Bowl was the perfect place to launch this new endeavor. And now I've got even better news for the rest of the country about the 2020 PBA playoffs because of a deal and a partnership now that we have a Bolero. We'll be able to have the first round of the playoffs at a Bolero in California next year. This, the round of 16 will then be held in Colorado. The round of eight will be in Texas. And the final four, this event that you see here today, will be in New Jersey at North Brunswick Lanes, formerly known as Carolier Lanes, where some of the greatest moments in PBA history have happened. So the Bayside Bowl fans have launched this thing, and now it's going to take off from around the country. We're really excited about it. That is amazing news. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. All right, guys, exciting news. Sounds like... Um Sounds like a lot of travel. I love it. It's great, man. <laughs> uh, take it from coast to coast. We get to spread this, this great yeah, word, spread this the gospel, great man. sport. Spread the gospel all over the United States. I'd like to know where they're going to be doing it in California. Selfish question. Uh, hey, if not, not, Northern Cal. Stay at my place. Yeah. All right. Race to two points is on. Point number one has already been earned. Chris Prather, 226-215. That means if he wins this match... He's got 100K to go spend in Portland tonight. Started game one with a nine spare. We'll have the chance to do the same here in game two. Take a look at some of the numbers from our opening game of this championship. Look at that, six of 11 for both players. Left lane, right lane, all about the same. And then the same number of spares. The difference was that Prather was able to string four consecutive strikes in a row. And also able to convert that 3, 4, 6, 7, yeah. 10 yeah. in the 10. I mean, that was huge. Bill O'Neill could only muster two doubles. And uh, a lot of that was due to some, some timing issues, I felt. Some poor shot making was the result. And he's going to start things off on the right lane with a ball change. Must win this game to force a roll off. Not how he wanted to start this one. Wow. Oh boy. Oh wow, was right. Well, it looks like he's gone to a stronger ball. He's moved wow. left. And the result is 4-9 four, four pocket wow. split. And it's certainly not the way you want to start, especially when you need a win. Converted just under 20% of the time on the tours, the 4-9 split. Open frame first. Flow Bowling is the home of PBA's Extra Frame, features live streaming of all Go Bowling, PBA Tour, and PBA 50 Tour events. Next up on Flow Bowling, live coverage of the Suncoast PBA Senior U.S. Open. It begins Monday, June 10th. Get your subscription today by clicking on the Flow Bowling link over on PBA.com. Crowd trying to get behind O'Neill in this must-win second game for Billy O. And a little right of target. Now, one ball is really strong, and that's the one he threw on the right lane. The one on the left lane looked like it bailed on him. And he's coming off of practice that he had prior to the start of this game, and he looks perplexed. He looks confused, and that's never good.
He's in trouble, and it's only the second frame. Open frame and a spare for O'Neill. Now Prather knows with the win here, he wraps up the inaugural PBA playoffs. Talking with him the other day, his wife Ashley is here. They have essentially calculated every dollar yeah. of this $100,000 potential payday and where it goes and a lot of it paying off, paying off debt. Really smart move. Student debt, car debt, and then saving. Oh! And a strike there in the second, gets him a little closer to that payday. And a ball change for Prather on the right lane. You know, it was interesting when you're talking about how they've already got calculated where each dollar goes. I thought it was interesting that he said they're gonna put 35% away in the bank for taxes. I immediately thought to myself, you need a better accountant. <laughs> Can you imagine if you and I were his accountant? You know, you know I, how hey, many bad decisions would be made with his money? I asked my accountant once, I said, what's two plus two? He said, what do you want it to be? Through <laughs> <laughs> the nose is yeah. Prather there in the third. Hated it immediately, it was left of target. And, and those type of shots there, to me, almost looks like the player is afraid to get it too far to the, to the right. And that's on the hooking lane. So this is just a miss left and a nice break only leaving, I believe, the 6'10". I can't see it, but let's see it here. Yeah, 6'10". Taking care of 94% of the time on the tour. Hammered into the pit. So at a minimum, Prather stays clean and isn't able to pull too far away from O'Neal. Open frame, and then a spare. Here he is in the third. Through the nose, late drop of the seven, though, makes this manageable, and he is really yeah. confused out there. Well, that was another two boards to the left from the last shot, and it hooked even more. Bill O'Neill's in big trouble right now. He has lost his ball reaction, his route to the pocket. It just goes to show you how much Sean Rash helped his look yesterday with Sean playing so much straighter and staying right of O'Neill. It gave Bill O'Neill a free highway to the pocket. Oh, the crowd is trying to get behind yeah. Billy. And he gets a big spare conversion there. In today's Go Bowling with Randy segment, we got a question from Go Bowling's Facebook page, Andy Luther. Do you have any tips? That will help me get back on the lanes after having surgery to my sliding knee, Randy. Well, I had, I've had i had three knee surgeries uh, from the sport of bowling. It's all about quad strength. Ride the bike. Do those uh, those ice skater moves where you put socks on and you slide back and forth. Have you ever seen the quads on a, on a speed skater? That's kind of what you're trying to do. Build the quads up. It'll take the knee pain away. Finally, a strike for Billy O here in the fourth. Man, that was rough trying to get that all in during this. And all this excitement and drama that we have. Bill O'Neill comes through on the left lane. And that's the good news. The bad news is he has to bowl on the right lane next. Right lane has been open frame and then a seven pin spare. Yeah, I mean, through the nose in the third. Yep. After a little bit high in the first. The shark. Starting to think about circling. So smooth, so effortless, so clean, so pure. You think he's a man-eater? Stick your hand in his mouth and see if he's a man-eater. No thanks. <laughs> what a beautiful shot. It's textbook-type stuff there. 
He just makes it look so easy, so balanced, and, and is just so fluid to the foul line. And then he's got such a great hand and touch. And you can see that great touch there as the six pin goes to the sidewall and Karate kicks the 10 out of the pit. It's been his coming out year. Won the Scorpion Championship. Finished fourth at the Go Bowling PBA Jonesboro Open. Yeah! And now closing in on the PBA playoff title. It takes two, and he gets a double here. We're going to learn a lot about Bill O'Neill right here. Working off a strike, but struggles on the right lane. Going back to the, the other ball. So it got two looks. Oh, no. Oh, no. Deflating. You make the change, you execute, and then it's Rob Stone's best friend, the 10 pin. Feel it just slipping away now because the results are not there. Even though that hit the pocket, it didn't strike. The spare game has been tested here in our second game. Kicks the 10 down. He's going to have a long time to think about his sixth frame. This Prather's going to step up and we're going to take a commercial break. Actually, Bill is going to finish out here in the sixth. Goes back to the left lane where he has his only strike here in our second game. Again, must win this game, Bill O'Neill. Otherwise, Prather takes the payday in the PBA playoffs. Needed that strike, gets the strike in the sixth. Again, though, both on that left lane has got to figure out the right lane ASAP. Right now, though, it's Chris Prather closing in on $100,000 in the first ever PBA Playoff Championship. PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, Kyle Troop, Jason Belmonte back at our desk. We're going to hear from them in a moment as we welcome you inside Bayside Bowl here in Portland, Maine. And the shark, Chris Prather, senses the chum in the water and is ready to take a big bite out of a $100,000 payday. He is up 24 pins here in our second game of our race to two. His effort in the sixth is working off a double. Three in a row. As nervous, as sweaty, as banged up as Prather was before we kicked this show off. He has brought the temperature down under control and he has been nothing but ice. Yeah, well now he's on autopilot and he's doing exactly what he's trained himself to do. And he is just repeating, making really good shots, good, making good decisions. And he's inching his way closer and closer to the big prize. Another strike here, he's up by 44. But I, I, I agree with you, I think he's handled this environment and this pressure brilliantly. Looking for a hand bone. Right of target. And still almost got it. That's huge. Uh, that could have been 2 8 10 easily. The other thing about this whole picture, though, is as O'Neill really hasn't put a lot of pressure on. It. You know, it, it, Prather has just been kind of cruising along and it's only and, been internal pressure. Right, absolutely. It's not like he's getting up saying, listen, I need three or four in a row to get back in this match. Late kick of the two left the lousy eight pin standing, and it's hammered to where it belongs in the pit. Worthless eight pin. 
Thank you, Rob. You're welcome, buddy. I always got your back. I know. And I appreciate you having my back. If there's a comeback in the books, it starts right here in the seventh. Has to. One more, he cuts it to 13. I think that Bill O'Neill will have any chance. He's got to strike out. His max score right now is 236. Prather is at 249 if he takes it off the sheet. Beautiful shot there. But O'Neill, I think in his mind right now, is thinking, my only shot is to strike out. This will certainly give Chris Prather something to think about if Bill O'Neill strikes on this ball. And through the nose. Kyle Troop, Jason Belmonte back on our desk. Guys, what are you seeing? Boys, it's not looking great for, for William. He, he hasn't executed the way that he wanted to execute. He hasn't got comfortable. Uh, he's made a couple of really good shots that didn't strike, and I think that's just gotten to him. Right now, he needs to find a way that, all right, make this spare. It can all change in a matter of one or two shots. So Chris still has to step up here and make great shots. But if he doesn't spare this, I'd be pretty uh, pretty confident to say that. I think I think it's over. Yeah, I think, uh, like you said, trouble. Also uh, very impressed with Prather, how he's handling himself. Uh, happy Gilmore, find your happy place. Looks like Prather's found it. And now we're in even deeper trouble, Jason. Left the nine. Open frame in the eighth. That's a dagger. An absolute yep. dagger to the O'Neill camp. Yep. Sitting on a 140. And oh, the smile and the look up by Prather tells the story. He's doing some math right now, not only with that payday, but with the pins. Max score now for Bill O'Neill is just 200. Chris Prather's at 219 right now. And a max for 200 for Bill O'Neill is so un-Bill O'Neill-like. Yeah. Particularly from what we saw from him yesterday. That electric 289 chasing perfection. Could never find that groove today. Oh. For a split second, that was a 710. Easy there, Trigger. Right. Cool your jets. It's not over yet. Still have to execute and avoid stuff like that. I'm not here to jinx anybody. We have seen some single pin yeah. spare conversions missed on the tour this season, more than we're used to. And Craven's able to drop that. And we saw that quick little fist pump as soon as he released it. That was, that was an exhale fist pump. I got it. Prather can max at a 238, O'Neill at 200. The lead is at 38. Prather up in the foundation frame ninth. $100,000 payday. Just two frames away, potentially, for Chris Prather. O'Neill must rally here in these remaining two frames to win this game to force a roll off. re asked by Prather. If Prather strikes on this ball, he just needs good count in the 10th frame. going well right of target left the 10 well he makes this he just still needs good count doesn't even need a mark boy did that shot get wide and again the 7 10 kind of teasing itself Good count, he knows it, looks yeah. up at his wife. And Bill O'Neill doesn't strike on this shot. You can hand Chris Prather the check and trophy. There you go, Billy. Put some pressure on him. I think that's all anybody is asking. Make him earn it. Well, yesterday we saw Prather foul. 
Today it was that five count split in the right. tenth frame. The three, four, six, seven, ten. He yeah, converted. but I think uh, I think he's probably going to be able to handle a few pins in the tenth frame. Two in a row. It's maybe a case of too little, too late. O'Neill strikes out. Prather leads seven on his first shot. And it's over. We love Bill is the chant. And good reason to love Bill. A 258 and then that magical 289 yesterday in the semifinals. It's over. Prather. Congratulations, young man. It'll be fun taking that one to the bank, huh? Yeah. Hello, Mr. Teller. Here's my $100,000 check. I would like that in once. <laughs> Congratulations, Chris Prather. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Ball great. Ball great. Your PBA going up playoff here. champ. He did ball great. Consistent, clean, yep. Yep. smooth, never really in danger. Go out and enjoy it. Bill O'Neill, what a show he put on over the weekend. But it's Chris Prather with the smile, with the arms raised. 2019 coming out party for that man. Indeed. Oh. We will hear from Prather in just moments. Kimberly and the crew assembling the trophy presentation. Hammers it into the pit. Couple of, uh, how long ago was it where he knocked off the number one player in the world and, and everybody, everybody, was, everybody, yep, was like, everybody was like, hey, look out for this guy. He has made a huge statement on the tour this weekend in Portland. Watch out, pros. Chris Prather. The shark takes the title. Kimberly with the winner. I'm also joined by the commissioner and CEO, Tom Clark, with the trophy presentation. Please do the honors. Awesome performance, Chris. The shark, man. <laughs> $100,000, this beautiful trophy. You're the first PBA playoff champion on Fox. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's all yours. All right, Chris. Literally, you told me a year ago that you were doubting on whether or not that you should be doing this tour full time. You just won the inaugural PBA playoffs, $100,000 to go with it. What does that say about where you should be? Never give up. Believe in yourself and anything's possible. I'd never dreamed that I'd be in this position, and here I am. They're chanting my name, and it's absolutely incredible. It has got to feel good to hear them chanting your name. Is this something that you've always dreamed about? Oh, yeah. This, this is a dream come true. I have always wanted to make bowling a career, and now I have, and I believe I've proved myself. Now, let's talk about the fact that you just won $100,000, and you have credited your wife, Ashley, for being your rock. What does this win and this money mean for you and her? Honestly, it validates her belief in me a little bit, and I think I'm going to be able to travel with her a little bit more, and uh, I hope she knows how much I love her and, and appreciate her believing in me. Now, can we just talk about the match for a little bit here? Because there was a lot said about your nerves, but you seem to push that aside, and you had that huge split conversion in that first match. Yeah, honestly, coming in, I told myself, no matter what happens, I'm making a lot of money, and I can't be disappointed making 40000 or or 100000 You know, it's a lot of money, but just being here in this environment is incredible, and I will remember this day for the rest of my life. Well, before you walk away from today, you have one more thing to claim the PBA playoffs. You need to go right over to that board and sign your name. Yeah, I do.
for the last time here at the PBA playoffs, one of the pros is going to put pen to paper. The Shark is your champion. Chris Prather wins the inaugural PBA playoffs. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Jason Belmonte, Kyle Troop back on the set with you. Ah, and a little go Lumberjacks, a shout out to his PBA league team, which will be right back here at the Bayside Bowl. Coverage on FS1 beginning Tuesday, July 16th through the 18th. Belmo, Kyle, what does this win mean for Prather going forward on the PBA tour? I, I think this is going to mean everything to him. I think we're going to see Chris Prather ball incredible every time he gets on TV. This match was the most nervous he's ever been. He conquered those nerves. Every match after this will be easier for him. And for me, I think we're in trouble, Jason. I mean, you are the best bowler on the planet right now, but Chris is looking pretty hot. He's got $100,000 in his pocket. I don't want to bowl against him anytime soon. Congrats to Chris. The tour rep for Chris Prather said that Chris is the best player on their staff that uses his thumb. Pretty good, uh, pretty good accolades there. And how good of a job did Tim Mack his tour rep do in calming down Prather in the lead up to this one. He was all nerves, but boy, he handled it with icy steel composure today in Portland. Chris Prather won his first tour title earlier this season, and now he's kissing hardware again, and he's cashing in $100,000 as well. Make sure to join us for our next PBA telecast live July 16th, 7 Eastern over on FS1, when the PBA League kicks off eight teams comprised of the PBA's biggest stars compete to capture the coveted Elias Cup trophy. And coming up next here on Fox, it is final round coverage of the U.S. Open Women's Golf Championship coming your way from Charleston, South Carolina. Loaded, top-heavy field there. Looking forward to golf, but in the end, Chris Prather raises the hardware at the inaugural PBA playoffs here in Portland.